Hey everybody! We are going to go ahead and tear down this Moto G 2nd Gen, so the 2014 version. So we're going to use just a couple of tools to do this. You can see that the screen is definitely cracked on this one, so we'll be doing a screen replacement as well. If you want to see the additional videos, it'll be down in the description. We'll be using a Torx T5 screwdriver, a guitar pick, and a nylon spudger is really what we're going to need for the basic disassembly of this device. If you want to go ahead and make sure the device is powered off, and take your opening tool or guitar pick and just slide it down the side of the device. Try to stick it in between this little seam here. I find the corners are probably the easiest place to start. Once you get them snapped off, just work your pick around. The back will come right off for you. And then you need to take out all of these Torx screws behind. You do want to make sure you remove your SIM card and your SD card if they are still in the device. So all the silver screws on the side of this device need to be removed. This does take a few seconds. Now the one thing you want to keep in mind as you're removing these screws on the back is you need to keep them in order of where they came out of on the phone. Uh, they do vary in length. There's some longer ones and shorter ones. Uh, the longer one came down here from the bottom. The shorter one came from the side. So just make sure you know exactly where they came from so you don't have any problems reassembling the phone. I use a dry erase magnetic mat that I have. Uh, it's a pretty cool little tool. You can write down on it where the screws came from, draw little pictures, whatever you need to do to keep your screws in order. So we'll just work our way across the bottom of this device. Now if screws do get stuck, you can use a pair of tweezers to get them out. As long as they're fully unscrewed and you remove the back off the phone, they'll normally pop off as well. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain to get out of Now I could fast forward and remove all the screws, uh, but the goal of my videos is to show you exactly what it takes to really tear down the device if you're an amateur or a beginner at this, uh, so you don't get any idea of that it's easier than it is portrayed within a video, or possibly just a, a walkthrough tutorial or a, a picture guide. So yes, I understand that I could fast forward it. I choose not to to give you a more realistic idea of what uh, the process is. We're almost done, just a few more screws to go. All right. Set those aside. Get this last bottom screw out of here. You can see the rear housing is pulling off for us. We do have the buttons here as well. The screw that came out, the last one. We do want to make sure we keep these and set them aside. So we'll need to put them back in our reassembly. A couple contact points in the back of the phone. We're not going to take everything off of this, uh, but these contact points will be part of uh, the antenna and things of that nature. Now looking at the back of this, you can see there's a nice big copper shield uh, down the back of the battery, also kind of up near the uh, SIM card, SD card slot. We're going to work on taking that out, but to do so we have to remove the SIM card slots um, and the SD card slots. So we're going to pull up the connector here at the top of the phone and try to work our spudger in and around uh, the reader here. It's just put down some double-sided adhesive on top of kind of the, the chipset on the back of the phone. This whole cable here is one piece. Try to work our way around. It's 
Can't get some leverage on it. We don't want to damage it, we just want to pull it up. So just be nice and gentle as you're doing this. Just try to get your spudger underneath everything. It seems like keep down here in the bottom right hand corner is probably the easiest spot to work your spudger underneath. Just gently twisting it and pulling it up. Now once you get it started, you want to be careful this vibration module here in the upper right hand corner. You want to make sure this pulls out with the cable. This is one piece. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. Now we can see that the copper shielding definitely extends further up and over the battery and the rest of the device. We're just going to pull this little clip here to release the cable for the battery. Just pulls out of its socket. We're going to try to pull the battery out. Now you want to be careful because there's not a lot in between this battery and the screen that you're prying against. Just a thin metal shield. So you don't want to twist a lot, you just want to try to get the battery and then pull it away and not push down against the front of the phone. I'm just pulling back on the battery. That was not a helpful pull tab, apparently. We're going to use our spudger to kind of scrape away a little bit more of this double-sided adhesive that's holding the battery in. Try to work it back and forth a little bit. A little bit closer to the top, it seems to be a little bit more adhesive up here. There we go, now it's popped free for us. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use this battery as leverage to pull the rest of the copper shield off. Now, I'm not pulling extremely hard, I'm just working my way up. And any corners or 90 degree angles on this copper shielding you wanna be careful of. You don't wanna rip it. If you do rip it, you want to make sure that when you put it back together that you overlap copper on top of copper. This is for heat dissipation, I believe. So just being nice and gentle as we pull it away from the back of the phone. Just be careful this little corner here. Cut the copper shielding intact. Just go ahead and set that whole piece aside. Now you can see there's the adhesive points on the back of the battery. Anywhere there's not yellow, here at the top and at the bottom. So if you put your spudger in right there, that'll help you remove it. The two marks on the back of the copper shielding will give you an idea of where it's at. Alright, next step is to remove the screws out of the back of the device that are holding the logic board in. See right here, here, and here. It will be pulled out. These are all Torx 5 screws. Just make sure you keep them separate from the remaining screws that you removed off the back of the phone. Perfect. Now with that done, we're going to try to go ahead and lift this board out. And to do that, we need to take out these three ribbon cables. One for the front-facing camera, proximity sensor, and then there's one down here along the side for the display. So we're just going to pull those back and just pop off like a pair of button on a jeans. There's this cable right here. What we need to do to actually remove this is take the capped on tape off the back of it. Try to use your spudger or you can use a pair of tweezers to pull that up. Now there's a little black piece on the back of it. It's basically like a fold up flap. We're just going to use that, fold that up, and then pull the ribbon cable back. It does have a couple of notches in it. You can use your spudger to kind of push against those notches and pull it out. With that done, we can go ahead and remove the board, which does include the 3.5mm headphone jack. It has the rear camera on it, and it's behind this metal tape right here. That's the headphone jack. And here's the camera, and it's behind this fabric tape. Let's just take a look and see how it's connected in here real fast. Just pull it back nice and gentle so we don't tear it. And it looks like it's just a pop-up connector. Same thing you saw for the front-facing camera, just pull it up. You can go ahead and remove and replace that rear-facing camera. Now we're going to remove a few more internal components here. We have our speakers which I would actually suggest removing. 
So it's a stereo, so there's a top and a bottom one. Now the reason why you'd like to remove these is so you don't damage them during the screen removal process. Take out the front facing camera and we'll take out the proximity sensor here in just a second as well. So we have our speakers here. We're going to go ahead and remove them. To do that, just take your spudger and just put it underneath the speaker portion. Just kind of pull it out. It is stuck in some double-sided adhesive. Uh, the black ring around it is included in this as well, so you can pry against it, but then in between the rubber gasket. Start on the other side and pull that up as well. Now you may ask, why do I have to remove this? I have had some speakers actually uh, get damaged in the screen removal process by heating it up. Um, so you want to be careful with that. I just like to remove them to be on the safe side. If you want to leave them in and risk it, feel free to do so. Alright, the next step is to go ahead and remove the proximity sensor, which is actually pretty simple. Just kind of pull up in this little metal portion here, it'll go ahead and pull out for us. There's a couple more grommets in here that you want to be careful with. I like to remove them because uh, they seem to get lost sometimes. There's one here at the top where the proximity sensor was at. There's usually one down at the bottom for the mic as well. Just get those removed or just make sure you know where they're at at all times during your disassembly. That is the disassembly of the Moto G 2nd Gen. If you want to see the screen removal and the reassembly process, just check out the description of this video. There will be links down there to them. As always, I appreciate you watching. If you found it helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for future videos, and as always, I appreciate you watching.